hearings. We could sit every other chair. We could be conducting the people's business. So why won't Nancy Pelosi quit criticizing the president and tell us what her plan is for bringing Congress back into session so we can lead by example and do the people's work? So I am all for that. My guess is lots of my colleagues are for that, but we haven't heard anything from Speaker Pelosi and Mr. Hoyer other than they're now saying we're not coming back until May 4th. Now, Congressman Zeldin, I want to get to you this. As uh, Congressman Jordan just mentioned Speaker Pelosi. Now, she's nowhere to be seen. She's, uh, she's at Pacific Heights in San Francisco, Napa Valley. I don't know where she is. But she's railing on President Trump. Politico reporting tonight that Pelosi sharply criticized Trump's handling of the coronavirus outbreak, telling Democrats, I guess on a call, that it was, quote, almost sinful how this, his administration has failed to live up to promises to make testing available to all American Americans and quickly uh, and gown and mass shortage, et cetera, across the country. So if this is almost sinful, Congressman Zeldin, what about a Speaker of the House when Americans are dying and people in small businesses say they're dying? Uh, Congress is not in session and she's apparently not going to pass a shutdown mandate uh, via legislation. Right, and the Paycheck Protection Program, that fund is going to run out of money. Uh, she looks at this as leverage to be able to get unrelated priority items, as she tried the last time with Phase 3, the Green New Deal, ballot harvesting, uh, and other items. Some got in, you know, the $25 million for the Kennedy Center, $350 million for the refugee assistance. Uh, that actually made its way into the bill. So she really likes the, the way that gavel feels in her hand. Uh, so for her, she doesn't look at this as an opportunity to be bipartisan or nonpartisan. And uh, she just wants to expand her majority. She wants to take out the president of the United States. Uh, and you know, regardless of the consequences for Americans that need Congress to work, uh, she's just going to do what's best in her own political interest. And by the way, she has people rank and file in her own conference. There are people I talk to. They would actually like to work with us, work with the president to get good things done. But unfortunately, the leader of their party doesn't have that same. To me most, Laura, is what we're seeing happen to civil liberties. Fundamental freedom. Well, the, gov the, the governor of Kentucky said he's going to arrest people at church. We had a we had a prosecutor in a, one of our counties say he was going to charge people for felonies if they weren't if they were violating the shelter at home. He even said if he was governor, he would call out the national guard and go to stop people from going to church on Sunday. We got Google saying they'll track and give that information to the government. And and the scariest thing of all, the scariest thing of all is Garcetti, the mayor of Los Angeles, said. If people snitch, they will be rewarded. And all this happens. Oh, I did that too. All this weeks happens ago. more. Yeah. All this happens at the same time that Michael Horowitz is telling us when he looked at the 29 FISA applications, every single one of them had problems when they were spying, when they were looking to go spy on American citizens. That's the context that scares me the most. So that's why Congress also should be back at work defending civil liberties and leading by example, doing the will of the people. I want to stand up and applaud that. Congress